This video is sponsored by Wonderful. No, not that wonderful. This wonderful. His link will be in the description. Hello, people of the internet. My name is Mr. JZM, and today I'm going to be telling you one of the ways to get a world record and be part of the elite club of people that hold the solo high round world records. Between the 31 maps that are featured on World at War, Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 4, and Black Ops Cold War at the time of this video's making, there are only 20 people that collectively hold all of those world records for solo. Well, you might be wondering, why didn't I mention Black Ops 3? Well, Black Ops 3 is a little bit of a different scenario with the whole round cap thing. There are 69 people that have 255s on Black Ops 3. And now I know that there are some maps that don't have 255s, or in Varuk's case, where there's only one 255, but that will be the topic of a different video. Point is, when we're going for the rest of these records, and it's not just a test of who has 30 hours to kill, we need to have every edge on the competition that we possibly can in order to get a world record, especially on these older games that are 10, 12 years old now. And that's why I'm making this video, to explain what entities are, which is something that a lot of the high rounders talk about, but some of you casual players might not know what we're referring to. Now, some of you might be wondering, Jordan, what do you know about getting high rounds? You only hold one world record and it's on the easiest map of all time. <laughs> That's so funny. Easiest map of all time. At least I don't share my record with 38 other people. I'm actually uh, sixth on that leaderboard behind 38 other people. <clears throat> Still not the easiest map of all time. It's like third easiest. Doesn't count. <laughs> Oh no, that's Mason. <laughs> anyway, my credentials aside, this is going to be a somewhat in-depth tutorial on how to control your entities and get a world record from someone who has no experience with computer science or game development whatsoever. So you might be asking yourself first, what is an entity and why are people talking about it so much? Well basically, an entity is something that exists on the map. I know that sounds really broad and that's kind of because it is. The mystery box is an entity, the perk machines are an entity, the zombies are an entity. That viable barrier you're looking at, definitely an entity. Even you are an entity. Well why do entities matter? Well in simple terms. Simple terms meaning terms that I understand because I actually have no clue. The longer that entities exist, the closer you get to the reset. The reset being the point at which your game is just going to reset back to round one for seemingly no reason, but a reason that I'm going to explain. Here's what the reset looks like. Ammo here. What? Oh. No! No! On Black Ops 1, this happens at around 60 to 70 hours, depending on the map. On Black Ops 2, it happens closer to 110 hours, depending on the map. And on Black Ops 3, it doesn't really matter. I wouldn't worry about it. The other games haven't quite been fully tested yet, so bear with me. Again, in simple terms, the reset happens when entities exist for 2 billion, 147 million, blah blah blah, 2 to the 32nd periods of time. I don't know if it's frames or, or just seconds or... I'm not a computer scientist, I'm sorry, but basically entities existing for longer contributes towards this reset. Now the reset is something that's inevitable. There's no way to avoid it, there's no way to prevent it. But what we can do is prolong it. And the way we prolong it is by minimizing the number of entities on the map. There are some entities that we can't control, like the zombies and the player and the mystery box, but there are a lot of entities that we can control. Linked in the description will be a spreadsheet made by Oxygen that showcases all of the entities that are possible to get rid of on Black Ops 1. Some of these include buying debris, destroying barrels on Nocturne on Toten, activating the Easter egg song, which counts as an entity on every map, and one of the more interesting ones, which most high round players do, but a lot of the more casual players don't realize, is actually getting rid of the quick revive machine. 
What many players do to get world records these days is buy all of their quick revives on round one so that the machine goes away. And what that does is it actually extends the reset time by about 30 minutes. Remember, we're trying to get every advantage possible. So even if it means being able to take less downs throughout the duration of your game, you're gonna wanna do it to extend that reset. For Black Ops 1, I would check out the spreadsheet and you can look at all of the specific entities that you can get rid of to maximize that reset. For Black Ops 2, there isn't a written list, but some of the same principles apply. Viable debris counts as an entity, activating the song counts as an entity, getting rid of the quick revive machine counts as an entity, and other things. Some lesser known things you might want to be aware of is that going to the bridge on Mob of the Dead will add entities, so you want to minimize your trips to the bridge. Ideally, you go once for Pack-a-Punch and once for the Hell's Redeemer, and you don't visit again. The more times you visit, the more entities you get. The more entities you get, the less your reset time will be. For the specific map you're playing, look into which entities can be saved and try and save them, especially if you're going for a world record. What I'll do now is I'll walk you through the process of saving entities on a map that I've been grinding lately. The zombie professors, like myself and like Wonderful, have been testing every possible thing that could be saving entities. And here's what we've found. As soon as you spawn in, hop up and get rid of this LSAT ledge. After buying Quick Revive, make a left and get rid of this ledge over here. As you open up the map, you're going to want to buy every viable door and barrier. Every single one. Then you're going to want to break open every single Leroy barrier. Every single one, including the one that leads to the nav card pieces. The only one I'm not so sure about is the fountain outside the witch's house, because I'm led to believe that the portal that spawns on the other side would count as an entity, but it hasn't been tested yet. Next, you're going to want to draw all of the chalk drawings. Every single one of those counts as an entity as long as it stays undrawn, but once you draw it, it's no longer an entity. Same thing goes for all buildable parts. Every single buildable part that exists on the map is an entity. So what you're going to want to do is build all four of the buildables and then build the guillotine and the gallows. Remember, if you've done one side of the Easter egg, then the corresponding parts will not spawn. In my game, I had already done the Richthofen side, so I only needed to build the gallows. Another major thing that I like to do to save entities is actually to play the beginning of the game with no power. The longer you can go with no power, the more entities you're going to save. But remember, you can't play no power the whole game, because putting a turbine in front of Jug when the power's off will actually disable it. And you can't do that when you're running the Jug strat for the rest of the game. The way you get your perks to activate without power is by using Perma Tombstone, the Perma Perk. When you go down with Perma Tombstone, if you come back up, all disabled perks will become enabled. What you're going to want to do is first use it to activate Mule Kick so you can get your third weapon. Then, after you get all of your perks again, down yourself one more time to enable all six of the other perks, then get Quick Revive one final time so that you get rid of the Quick Revive machine. Lastly, make sure you lock Leroy in his cage, but keep the key in your inventory. The key existing on the map is going to count as an entity, but not if you're holding it. Also, as a side note, in the late game, you may want to run Trample Steam instead of running the Resonator and Turbine strat. That's because the Trample Steam counts as one entity, while the Resonator and Turbine count as two. But it hasn't entirely been tested yet, and from the testing we've done so far, it's not that great and it's extremely slow, so use your own judgment. One last important thing to remember is this is still being tested. The zombie professors aren't quite sure about everything that I have mentioned. And for all we know on a map like Buried, entities don't matter because the error is always going to prevail. So here's something I was thinking. I, I didn't think about this until just now, but I wanted to ask you. Uh, so at what point do you stop running Trample Steam and start running Resonator? Because you can't run, like, because once you start running Resonator, you have to turn the power on. If I'm correct, because otherwise you lose Jug. Because if you put, if you put a turbine down next to a perk while the power's off, when you pick up the turbine or when the turbine gets destroyed, 
the perk will disable itself. Even if you've done the quick revive glitch. So if I leave the power off and go run Jug and like and go do that, then Jug gets disabled. I have to turn the power on or run no Jug. Yeah, so like I said, still being tested, still under speculation, still not even entirely sure if it matters on certain maps. But either way, if you would like to track your entities in-game, which you can see the effects of how it extends your reset, there are great tools for Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2 that allow you to keep track of your resets. I'll leave links to those in the description. Anyway, before I go, my final piece of advice is, if you are going to spend 30 minutes on round 1 getting rid of all of the entities like I did, make sure you're actually good at the map first. Don't do this. How much slower is Trample? This is somewhere around 14 to 15. Oh. oh, this is not looking good. I have no monkeys. How do I get out of here? How do I get out of here? Oh boy. I don't see a way out of this. Oh boy. Okay, I should just let them down me. And hopefully they'll not be slow. I can't fly up. There's a ceiling above me. Don't be slow. Run away. Run away. Run away. You're joking. You're joking! Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I am going to still be attempting Buried because the map is actually really fun even though it has some annoying moments like that. Like, why did that resonator just disappear? Didn't spark up and... Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial about entities. I'd like to make this into a little series explaining some of the more complex zombies topics in a more simple form. Hopefully you understood what I was saying, because sometimes I didn't either. But yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Stay safe out there, and peace.